What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. So as you can see, I am high up on this rocky escarpment here at the moment. I came out here this morning and pretty much the plan for today is I'm gonna be looking for some reptiles. Now, here in Australia, we have 869 species of reptiles that call this place home. 93% of them being unique to this continent. They're found nowhere else in the world, which is really cool. Now the reason why I've picked this cliff to look on in particular is because all reptiles are cold-blooded, which means when that sun comes up in the morning, they're gonna be coming out to warm up for the day. So I'm gonna be searching this 50 meters of cliff right here, back to front to try and find some deadly animals. I know that there's death adders out here. That is one species that I've always wanted to come in contact with. And after this, I've got a really cool adventure planned for the rest of the day as well. So let's start walking around, searching this cliff, and hopefully we can find some cold-blooded cousins. All right, and would you take a look at this right here? This is a good sign. This is not goanna skin. I'm pretty sure that's from a python. Look, more of it right down here. Definitely from a big python that has been sitting up on this rocky escarpment right here. Look, there's more of it down there. You can tell it's a python by the belly scales. Pythons have three very distinct belly scales. All other species of snakes like tree snakes, browns, taipans have one strip across like that. So we know he's around here somewhere. That's a good start. We know we're looking in the right place. Hopefully we can try to find him. So I was just walking out here through the bush and would you take a look at what I spotted right here. That is a massive coastal carpet python sitting right down there. Oh, he just bit me on the foot. Doesn't want anything to do with me though. But we're just gonna let him crawl between my legs like that. And I think he's gonna go down that bank right there. We could maybe even follow him down the escarpment and see where he goes. Just perched right up on this cliff right here overlooking this creek system. And would you take a look at all of this? All of this skin that's coming off of him at the moment. So I'll help him out. It is so hot out here at the moment, but I say we keep pushing on, we go a bit further and see if we can find any other animals. That was so cool. So one of the most important things that I have learned about looking for snakes and reptiles over the years is you've got to drop into that animal. You've got to pretend you are that species. What do you need? You need food, water, shelter, sun. So coming to a place like this, it ticks all of those boxes for those species. Now I just got to put in the time and hopefully come across a couple. So we've just walked a bit further down this cliff and we have found another reptile over behind us right here. Would you take a look at that big fella sitting down there? Now that is the goanna, also known as the Australian Lace Monitor. I'm just gonna see how close I can get to her at the moment. Now I'm definitely in biting range for this goanna right now and trust me, I would not wanna take a bite from one this size. Pretty sure it's a big female, she might even be pregnant, so we're just gonna leave her alone. But these goannas not only have extremely razor sharp teeth, facing backwards so that when they grab their prey, they can't get out. Brian Fry from the University of Melbourne actually studied these animals here and what he realized was not only was the bacteria in their mouth so bad, it's actually considered a mild venom. It's not too effective on humans or anything, but it would definitely help to bring down small prey, which is so cool. They're like the exact same as the Komodo dragons over in Indonesia and one of my favorite species to come across. They're a very common species. They're not endangered, but they're still protected. So I couldn't go picking up this one or anything as much as I would like to. <laughs> Look at the shape of their body, perfectly built for areas like this. 
Those massive claws will help them scale trees if they need to get away from predators. These type of reptiles and crocodiles are basically the closest thing we have to dinosaurs these days. But just imagine 30,000 years ago, this guy being the size of a crocodile and running around on the land, causing havoc, running down big game animals and everything. It would have been crazy to see and that is something that actually happened. These guys used to be absolutely massive. It's still so cool to see one like this. Oh, there she goes. Making a run for it. Up here. Where are you going? Going for a climb, are ya? I remember coming out to this place when I was a lot younger and filming a heap of different Goanna videos out here. So it's cool to get back out here and do it again. Doing all the same sort of stuff, but I reckon we keep going and see what else we can catch. That is awesome. So I've been walking around this cliff for about an hour now, and here is another snake that we found sitting up on the side of this cliff right here. So this behind me right here is known as the freshwater snake, also known as the keelback. Now this is a non-venomous species of snake, but they look incredibly similar to a species of snake we have here called the rough scale. You have to really know what you're looking for. Here's photos of both the snakes up on the screen right now. Now I have been wanting to run into this snake for so long because the amazing thing about them is they are the only species of snake here in Australia that can successfully eat and digest cane toads. There's only two species in Australia that can actually do this and that's the keelback this guy over my shoulder right here, and the sawshell turtle. And I'm thinking, I might as well go and try find a sawshell turtle after this to show you the two toad killers that we have here in Australia. Oh, there he goes. And off he goes. It was bound to happen when I got a bit too close, but he's down that cliff right now. I've found another one. That is crazy, two in one week. Take a look at this down here. Now I knew this video was meant to be all about reptiles and it is, but how this little fella actually relates to reptiles is the name Echidna comes from a Greek mythology creature which was supposedly half woman, half snake called the mother of monsters. And the reason why it was named that is because when this animal was first described, it was said to have both mammalian and reptilian features. So that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna set the camera up and get down in front of this animal and see if he'll come back out. He's tucked away at the moment. So the reason why I've been seeing so many echidnas lately is because from the months June to September, what happens is both the males and females will actually emit a strong odor, which will help them find each other. And these are the months that they will breed. So after these animals find each other and actually mate, what will happen is the female will lay a small rubbery egg inside their pouch. And after it hatches, it'll hatch out a small puggle as they're called, which will be the size of a jelly bean. And it will carry that puggle in its pouch, sometimes even burying it in a small hole covered in leaf litter, going getting food and coming back for about three months until it's big enough to go fend for itself. And that puggle, that baby echidna, can sometimes actually grow up to 40 years old in the wild, which is pretty cool. And he's about to go burrow under my neck right there. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. They're more commonly found at about 10 years old in the wild though. Where are you going, mate? I feel like I should just stay still now. I don't want to scare him or anything. He doesn't really seem to mind. Going out this way, mate. They are literally the coolest animal. I absolutely love these guys. And it's cool that now that it's um, breeding season that you'll see them out more. But that does mean that you'll have to slow down on the roads a bit because they're often found going looking for mates during this time of year. But yeah. How cool is that? The other crazy thing about this animal is see that big nose at the front right there? 
These guys are specialists in digging into ant holes, termite mounds and everything. And they actually have six inch long sticky tongues that they'll shoot in there, come out with a tongue full of ants and keep going on their way. Absolutely loves it. Hey buddy, what are you doing mate? All right, so he's just crawling off into the bush at the moment. You can see him like waddling away over there. But another amazing encounter with an echidna. I'm gonna keep walking up this creek, see what other species I can find. And if I can't find anything up this creek, I'm gonna head back home and show you a venomous species of snake that actually lives in my house. I'm gonna try to get some cool footage of it. So we have a plethora of species that live not only around us, but in our backyard too. And this, is Big Chungus. He's the local yellow face whip snake that lives in a rock wall on our driveway, which just proves that here in Australia, you don't have to go far to find snakes. Now, normally I go out and eat brekkie with him while he sunbakes every morning, but this time I decided to follow him around and get some footage of him. So yellow face whip snakes are a venomous species of snake that primarily feed on small lizards, bird eggs, frogs, mice, and other small animals. And although not considered dangerous to humans, they're not a snake that you want to get bitten by. When bitten, it's said to be extremely painful and will cause major swelling around the bite area. They're often confused with the highly venomous eastern brown snake, which is definitely a snake that you do not want to get bitten by. So after following this little fellow around for a while, it inspired me to go find some more reptiles. So I set off up the creek and it wasn't long until I'd found something. So this is the second keelback that we found in today's video, the second cane toad killer. Now we're out in this creek system actually looking for saw shell turtles and we managed to come across this big fella. But take a look at that, they're so hard to distinguish from rough scale snakes. Look at it, it looks exactly like it. The other name for this species is actually a fresh water snake, but look at this. Stay still, he doesn't even care. Snakes would have to be Probably my favorite animals that I can actually come out here in the wild and find. All of them are so different, so unique. They have different capabilities, different venoms. Venom has always been something that's really fascinated me, so I think that's why I'm drawn to this species so much. This little guy down here, non-venomous, but still such a cool animal. And cool just to see them in their natural habitat doing their own thing. What are you doing, mate? crawling right down past me. So this little guy is gonna go back out, probably try to hunt some frogs later on. We're gonna let him do that. And I think what we're gonna do now is wait for it to get a bit darker, head up the creek, go for a night walk, and hopefully try to find a platypus. That's the end goal. He's right underneath the crotch, he's in your pocket. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no. What? Snake in a pocket. Yeah. Did you film that? Yeah. That is, he's literally in my pocket right now. True. You can see him sitting in my pocket right there. That is actually so funny. Lucky this is a keelback and it's not a rough scale or anything. <laughs> Obviously if it was a rough scale, I wouldn't be getting this close to it. But that is so cool. Doesn't that remind you of when we were out filming and the um, tree snake crawled up under my shirt? Oh, he's He's going in your shirt. Is he? Yeah, he's going in your shirt. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh. I feel him. He's, he's not, you can see him. You see him moving up? I got a perfect shot of him. You feel much, mate? He is climbing oh. up my shirt at the moment. <laughs> this is him right here. Oh. There he is. He's just trying to get a bit of cover. Oh, yeah, that was so good. <laughs> 
That was funny as. Stuff like this happens to me all the time, but that is so cool. We're gonna get this little fella out of my pocket now. Right, and there we go. All right, I'll just drop you down like that, mate, and you can go about doing your own thing. I hope you catch a couple frogs tonight or put a dent in the cane toad population, hopefully, but we're gonna let you be. See you, mate, you're an absolute legend. That is so cool. So after finding all of those animals throughout the day, I decided to go on another night walk later that night up the creek to try and find some more venomous animals. And it wasn't long until I found the first animal of the night. All right, so I'm being very quiet. I'm just sneaking up on it now. But would you take a look at what we got right in front of us right here. So we just started this adventure up the creek tonight looking for platypus and we have spotted an Azua kingfisher. This is my favorite species of bird by far. Take a look at them. Those colors on their body is just absolutely crazy. It's so cool to see them, especially perched up in a tree like this. We're gonna try and not wake her or anything. So wherever there's water, you will find these Azua kingfishers all across the east coast of Australia, up north Queensland, and even into Papua New Guinea and some parts of Indonesia. They're such a beautiful little species of bird that primarily feed on crustaceans, small fish. They'll wait up in trees, wait till they see a fish, swoop down in the water, fully submerge themselves under the water and grab it. They're even known to follow around platypus and watch what the platypus stir up then going down and picking up the scraps that the platypus might have missed. So we're on the right track if we want to find a platypus tonight. It would be so cool to find one. I'm going to let this little fella be. He's just woken up. So I say we keep walking up the creek and see what else we can find. That is so cool. Australia is filled with so many weird and beautiful animals all over the country. And throughout my years of filming videos, I've documented some of the most dangerous and amazing species that this country has to offer. Such an impressive snake. But today, we're going to be attending attempting to track down one of the weirdest, the platypus. So platypus are a semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal endemic to Australia and these guys are so crazy. They're literally just a bunch of different animals all pieced together into one. Believe it or not, they were first discovered in 1798 and when they were first described, it was thought that they were a hoax. This is one of the species that people go their whole lives without seeing in Australia. And especially after the wildfires, after the habitat loss, these platypus were recently listed as endangered. So what I thought I'd do is come out here and teach everyone a bit about this amazing species, raise awareness for them, and all the money earned from this video, I'm gonna donate to platypus conservation. So this creek system in particular is a creek that I've been coming to for years, and I know that there's a couple places up this creek where platypus do live. So we're gonna be heading there. Who knows what other species we'll find along the way, but I'm keen for the mission. Let's get into it, and I'll teach you a bit about platypus along the way. Right, and would you take a look at this big fella just down here? Wow, what a beautiful snake. Oh, striking at the camera. What a way to start the morning and what a way to start this video right here. So we're just gonna follow him around and see what he does. Going for a swim. Where are you going? Just jump up here. Like an anaconda almost. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? Just a massive python chilling in this little creek right here. Look at that. If I put my GoPro underwater. Would you take a look at this? So we're on the hunt for platypus 
up this creek system here in southeast Queensland and we have come across another monotreme. So what a monotreme is, is it's an egg laying mammal and that's what these platypus and echidnas are. There's only two monotremes in Australia and we have encountered one on the search for the other so that's pretty cool. At least we know we're on the right track. I've filmed heaps of videos with these echidnas recently because at the moment it's breeding season. She's just having a drink at the moment. You can see her popping her little head out there. These echidnas' body temperatures are so much lower than any other mammal. Like the platypus, for instance, they have two coats of fur that keep them waterproof. They actually store a thin layer of air in between the fur and their skin to keep them dry at all times. Even when they're underwater, they're still fully dry. These echidnas don't actually have that, so in winter they slow down a lot more. Let's move back and see what she does. One of the funniest stories that I've ever heard about echidnas was years back this guy I know was walking in a national park by himself and he heard this rustling going through the bush and he's like, what is that? Like that's a big noise. He thought it was a big animal. And he looks over and there's a train of five echidnas walking across the ground head to tail following each other. Like literally in a massive line and he's like in disbelief for a couple seconds. He goes over to try and get a photo and they all start digging into the ground and stuff. And he was saying that for years he'd tell people the story and no one would believe him but to my amazement apparently what happens is that was the female sitting at the front and all the males that are looking to mate follow her head to tail just behind her in a trail you'd have to be so incredibly lucky to see that in the wild though but I thought that was a pretty funny story how no one believed him now echidnas are just as hard to find as platypus when you're actually looking for them so it's pretty cool that we got one monotreme on camera now let's aim to get two So just over that way is the first pool where I know that there's platypus in. So what I'm gonna do, stay really quiet, get down and try to get some footage of one of them. Might even swim out on that log. Yep. All right, I gotta be quiet. That right there is a platypus. And we have found one out in this remote creek system in Southeast Queensland. Take a look at that. All right, so it's not too close at the moment, but I'm just gonna stay quiet and see if it comes any closer. This is crazy, man. Just sitting here watching these platypus swim past in this pool. So what this platypus is doing right now is it's actually hunting. It's moving its head back and forth through the water and it's actually using electronic impulses which bounce off their prey and help them detect where they are. Not only is this animal venomous, not only does it look crazy, but they give sharks a run for their money with the electric impulses. Since they spend 12 or more hours in the water, they actually have two layers of fur that trap a layer of air right next to their skin. So him in the water right there, he's completely dry. Dry. Just absolutely loving it. Even when it gets so cold here in Australia, they're completely dry underneath the surface. I actually read something pretty funny the other day about platypus saying when they're put under UV lights, they give off a biofluorescent blue-green glow which is strange, but even stranger the people putting them under UV lights. <laughs> Once you see one in the wild, you totally understand what they were saying, how they're a bunch of animals pieced together. They've got the bill of a duck, the tail of a beaver, webbed feet, and the body kind of looks like a water rat almost. And the males have two venomous spurs at the back of their body.
since we've come this far up the creek, we're gonna pack everything up, keep walking, see what other animals we can find, and then go for a snorkel down in this massive pool down the end there. I tried so hard to sneak up on him then, but he was just too quick. I think he's got washed down the river. Where'd you go, mate? So we'll head down that way and see if we can see him or if we can find any other animals. So not only have we just made it down to this absolutely cinematic, this beautiful waterfall right here, I have just spotted a massive coastal carpet python sitting on this rock right in front of this waterfall. So, just up on the rock behind me right here is a big coastal carpet python. And I think he's ready to whack me in the face any moment, to be honest. You're joking. This snake is fully underwater at the moment. And he's going. Oh yes, he's going. He's swimming. Where are you swimming to, mate? You were joking. All right, let's follow him. He's swimming up in this cave. Oh. Where to? Oh, it's hard to keep up with him. Look at this guy going through the water. What a beautiful snake. All right. He's made it to the land. He's made it. You beauty. He'd be pushing two meters for sure. And he's just out here doing his own thing. When you think about it, this guy has everything you need here. He's got a nice water source. These caves and rocky areas are just filled with bats. So we'd just be feeding on them, getting fat, maybe hunting possums and bandicoots. He would definitely... Wanna hit me on the face? Yeah, of course this guy is home within these caves. Look at him scaling that wall right there. Such a beautiful big snake. Oh, scared a little spider. What are you doing, buddy? It's just so cool to watch him do his own thing. I mean, we came out here looking for platypus, and this is the stuff that you find when you go on adventures like this. This is actually the second time that I've swam with a massive carpet python now. The first time I did it, you might have seen the clip. It was out at a crystal clear creek system out in a national park. I'll roll you the clip now. Such an impressive snake. Just on my neck right now. I think I'm pretty sure he just wants to get out of this cold water. So I'm gonna wait for him to swim over to the other side and then leave him on his way. So cool. Just sharing this awesome experience with this big coastal carpet python. I can tell he's gonna love getting out of the water here. Look at him just scaling that rock right now. Oh. Let's go back over without getting this camera wet or hopefully getting attacked by an eel tail catfish. I probably did disturb him a bit, so I'm sorry for that, mate, but it was so cool to have that awesome experience with that carpet python, as well as the platypus. What I'm gonna do now, chill with this carpet python a little bit more until he finds a place to curl up or something. All right, and would you take a look at that big fella right there? So that is a big, angry eastern water dragon. Now, this is a big male. They do get a lot bigger than this, surprisingly. They're such a beautiful species. Look at all those spikes down his back 
These ones on the top of his head, oh, he's looking for my finger. He wants to bite it. You're a bit of an angry little fella, aren't you, mate? We're gonna let him go in a minute. We're just making sure he's all good. But would you take a look at that face right here? Now, the reason why they get their name Water Dragon is these guys are at home around the creek systems here on the east coast of Australia. All right, and I'll just grab you like that for a second, mate. See that beautiful red coloration on the bottom of this guy's stomach? That's how you know that it's a male. The males get the biggest and often you can see them actually fighting, standing up on their back legs and kind of tackling each other. But yeah, I'm not gonna keep this little fella too much longer. He's not our target species, so we're gonna keep going on our quest. But yeah, let's let this little fella go in the most beautiful pool right behind us right here. All right, so that was such an awesome experience down at this waterfall with that big snake. So what I'm gonna start doing now Head back up that way and see if we can find some more platypus. Maybe even have a close-up experience with one. Little dude's just in here climbing the tree. Waterfall in the background. That is awesome. All right, we'll leave you be, buddy. See you later. So I thought I'd sit down here real quick and explain to you the reason why these platypus are facing a silent extinction as they call it. Platypus actually live in freshwater streams and rivers from North Queensland all the way down to Tasmania. And everyone thought that they were thriving, but recently their numbers have absolutely plummeted, especially down in Victoria. To reproduce, the female platypus needs to dig a hole inside a bank, but to do that they need healthy rivers, they can't have droughts, they can't have wildfires come through, and they can't have people setting crab traps and yabby traps that they drown in either. So WWF Australia is a site that you can go donate some money to to help out these platypus and even if you have a spare dollar or two everything helps just go over there help out these platypus. I'll leave a link in the description. As I said at the start I'm gonna be donating all the money from this video towards platypus because these animals do need our help right now. They're literally on our coins here in Australia so Everything helps and us humans as a whole can make a big impact towards helping platypus if we all come together right now before it's too late. But on the brighter side, we found two absolutely awesome snakes, had an amazing encounter with those platypus swimming around in that pool. But I want something else. I'm thinking that during the late afternoon, at night and early morning, these platypus will come out and forage through the creek system. They'll leave those big pools that they generally stay in throughout the day. And I've had really close up encounters with platypus before while going on night walks up my creek. So I reckon we pack up, charge up the torches, maybe even put the wetsuit on and see if we can go swimming with one later on tonight. That would be absolutely amazing. It's mid-afternoon at the moment. It's a beautiful day. So let's keep going and see what else we can find, baby. That's awesome. After searching for platypus into the night and not finding any, I decided to head back home. But on the way there, you won't believe what I found. So I was just out here driving the roads at night looking for reptiles. And would you take a look at what I've found over my shoulder right here. So that right there is the Australian native koala bear. So I actually spotted this koala crossing the road from ages away and I had cars behind me. I didn't care. I slammed on the brakes. I made sure everyone stopped and waited for this little girl to get off the road because the amazing thing about this is not only is it one koala, it's got a baby as well. So I'm not trying to disturb it or anything. It just climbed up into this tree right here. But I'm actually an ambassador for the Queensland Koala Crusaders who do great work saving these guys. I remember Steve Irwin saying this in a documentary once, but having an up close and personal experience with animals like this makes you want to save it. And it is so true. So if you ever find a beautiful animal in the wild, especially one that's endangered, make sure you appreciate that experience because on the way that it's going, if we don't act now, these koalas could be extinct. And that's something that I cannot even begin to imagine. However, there are a lot of people doing great stuff to help this species. The Queensland Koala Crusaders, if you wanna go check out all of their stuff, you can help save this beautiful animal behind us right here. So one of the common misconceptions with this animal is its name is a koala bear, but these guys aren't actually bears at all. They're marsupials. Now what marsupials are, are pouched animals. Animals that raise their young inside a pouch but you can see that its baby down there is actually big enough where it doesn't have to go on the pouch anymore. And this koala will continue to carry its baby on its back until it's big enough to fend for itself. Now the name koala actually comes from an indigenous term meaning no drink. And it was thought at one point that these guys would never have to come down from their treetop thrones to actually have a drink. But it's because a lot of the water is actually found in these eucalyptus leaves that they eat. Although during big droughts, they will have to come down and find water eventually. Eventually. But I'm gonna let this big girl be and um, that is so crazy. I'm so stoked with that. Thank you very much. All right, big girl I'm gonna let you be See you later 
please do not go running back on the road. Look at that. If that right there is not an animal that you want to save, you've got to be crazy. So I think we need to do our best right now while we still have these species here and before it's too late. Please do not go back on the road though, yeah? Promise me that. The road is literally right there. All right, and that is it for another video, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you so much for not only watching this far into the video, but your continuous support on all my content that I post on this channel. It's so amazing to me that I have a platform where I can raise awareness for different species like the platypus and the koala. So I thank you for that. None of this would be possible without you. And yeah, if you'd like, go give us a follow on Instagram, share this video around, like, subscribe, comment down below. It all really helps. There'll definitely be more conservation videos like this in the future. So yeah, thank you very much. These are all absolute legends and I'll see you again next Saturday in the next adventure.